All right, so this video is going to basically, go, it's it's basically an experiment. I'm just kind of messing around with Painter to see how this can be done. But I'm, I'm, I'm basically going to be putting a logo on my Painter file and then hoping that I can drag it around and reposition it without having to like move all of the masks for every individual uh, layer that I add to it to change things up a little bit based off of um, the question I got in discord about this uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about as I go along but basically first you're gonna start out with the logo itself for this one I just went ahead and did, did the Domino's logo because it's three colors white red and blue um, just to kind of show how this would work as far as if it's a little more complex than that if it has like gradients and stuff it's gonna be a little bit different um, but I'm thinking you could do something along the same lines with that even if it's like that so First, uh, instead of having a transparent PNG of the logo, what you have to do when you're bringing it into Substance Painter and you're going to paint with an alpha, is you have to create the, the color and the alpha separately. So this is the color file, and then the alpha file looks like this, where it's going to have a black background, and anything that you want to show is going to be white. So that's what I bring into Substance Painter. I've got them already loaded up right here. I've just got the default meat mat guy here. And what I want to do is be able to put this logo pretty much in the center and then be able to move it around, even after making a whole layer stack with it, move it around and uh, not have to move individual masks around for every layer that needs that mask to match up with the logo. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. And I went ahead and just, I did it already, but I'm going to start again from scratch and hopefully get it to look the same as I had it before. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a paint layer. And then with that paint layer, I'm going to go ahead and drag the dominoes color into the base color. And then for the uh, alpha, you can either just double or you can just click on an alpha uh, if it is an alpha file, or you can drag and drop it on the alpha. And it'll give you this. And this is exactly what I want. Um, and then I also had to make sure that the size space I set to viewport and the alignment I set to UV. And what we're going to do is we're just going to paint that directly in the middle. As you can see, it's only affecting the actual uh, UV tiles, but the paint is still there on the entire canvas, and that's what I want. Um, so on top of that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rename this. Uh, we'll name it Logo Anchor. And I'm going to add a, an anchor point to this. I'm just going to right-click, go down to Anchor Point, and that anchor point is going to reference upward so anything we add on top of that we want to reference this uh, anchor point from later on we can do that so on top of this i'm going to add a blank layer fill layer to just kind of get rid of that just let's say that our you know let's say our base material is going to be i don't know some kind of gray blue or whatever it doesn't matter this is just our base color our base material for this particular object and it's going to be covering up this logo. We don't want to see this logo. This is just for reference later on. Now on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and add a fill layer and I'm just going to enable the color. And I'm going to call this floating logo. And in this base color fill, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it, go to anchor points, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the logo anchor. And you know what, I'm just going to delete this so all those other anchor points go away. All right, so I've got the base color logo from down here being referenced into this one. And now I can go ahead and scale this down, move it into place where I want it. Um, I can also change the tiling or UV wrap from repeat to none so that there's no tiling happening. It's only on the one part that I want here. And I can move this into place anywhere I want. I can rotate it. I can do all this kind of stuff. And then let's say that I want to be able to make each of these different colors have different properties. For instance, I'm going to try to make the red one, like, I don't know, super glossy. And I'm going to make the blue one have some height added to it. Um, and with that, I'm going to have to use more fill layers on top of this to kind of drive that information. So what I'll do is first I'm going to add another anchor point to this layer 
to this fill layer. That way anything that I do to this layer will translate upward to any layers that are referencing this particular anchor point. So I'll go ahead and start with that super glossy one. First, let me make the base one. I'm going to make this a little more rough just so you can see what's happening. I'm going to make this instead of here. I'm going to bring this to somewhere pretty rough. And then on this top layer here, I'm going to only enable my roughness. I'm going to drop that down all the way so that it's basically reflective. And then on top of that, well, let's just call this, uh, I don't know, shiny red. And I'm going to add a black mask. And then I'm going to right click and go to fill. And then from here, this is where I'm going to select the floating logo anchor point. And from here, this is where you're going to basically create the mask that's only going to grab from the red information here. Um, I'm not too well versed in this, so I kind of just, you know, shim it around and figure out a way to do it that works for me. There might be a better way, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and alt click on the mask to see what I'm doing. This is what my mask looks like currently. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the luminosity see if this works the same as it did before. I'm going to go into the blue channel. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to... How did I do this before? Okay. So basically, I want this and then I'm going to go ahead and invert that. So the only part that's showing is the red part here. And you can kind of finagle with the... the the levels to get what you want. And then this isn't fully white, so I'm just going to add another levels adjustment to it. And I'm going to, sorry, whoops, wrong way. I'm going to bring the white values way up. And it looks like this is not quite what I want. Let's see if I can bring that down a little bit. Okay, cool. So this is what I want my mask to look like. I only wanted to highlight the red part here. So now when I go back in, oops, now you can see only the red is shiny. So that's one material attribute that I've added to this that's being affected by a specific color. And then let's say I want to add some height to the blue one. So I'm going to add another fill layer. We'll call this blue height. And I'm going to just enable the height channel. Let's bring up the height somewhere around here. Right click, add a black mask. Right click again, and I'm going to add a fill and we're gonna basically do the same thing with the floating logo anchor point and we want to isolate this part here so I'll kinda of try to replicate the same thing Cool, so that looks like it's pretty well isolated, and I'm going to invert that so only the blue part is white. And then I'm just going to control shift and click right, or sorry, left click drag this levels adjustment on top of this one so that I get this completely white here. And now, cool, so I've got shiny red and I've got blue that's sticking out with some height information here or whatever you want to do to it. This is just for example how this works. And then you could do kind of the same thing with the white and just finagle to get the white to do a specific thing. Doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do, um, you could apply it to the entire logo. You can apply it to just parts of it. But now I want to move the logo in place somewhere else. And I don't have any masks applied to these other than the anchor point that it's grabbing from below. So no matter what I do to this logo here, the top uh, layers on top of it that are referencing it, they're going to follow along and do the exact same thing. So if I move this around, if I scale it, it doesn't matter. It's using this layer uh, to build the masks for each of those different material attributes. So that's, that's one way of doing it. I'm sure there are other ways, and I'm sure there might be easier ways. Um, but that is that's the best me best method I could think of um, for right now. I'll try to think of if there's any easier way to do it. But honestly, anchor points is probably the best way to do almost anything in this realm uh, within Substance Painter. 
Anchor points are incredibly powerful once you understand them and can figure out how to, how to utilize them to their fullest potential. All right. Thanks for watching.